Hello everyone and welcome to our last Dominaria United spoiler video. I'm Scott and today we got the full set from Dominaria United so we don't have much to talk about. We've got a couple of, of rares to talk about and then some lower rarity stuff that definitely is going to see play in the standard season. And I want to make sure that everybody also realizes that this is going to be a relatively short standard season, about five or six weeks of real standard before we get the next set, the Brothers War. So we're about, to, you know, at this point, we're about two and a half months or a month and a half um, or so after the pre-release from the next set. So we're going to be moving very quickly through the standard format in, into the next one. So let's get started. So our first card of the day is Defiler of Instinct. So this is our red Defiler. So we get our final Defiler in the series. For four mana, you get a Phyrexian uh, Kavu with first strike, and as we've seen on all of these, as an additional cost to cast red spells, you may pay two life. Those spells cost one red less to cast if you pay life this way. This effect reduces only the amount of red mana you pay. And the bonus for playing a red deck is when you cast a red permanent spell, Defiler of Instinct deals one damage to any target. So it's got a kind of a mini pinging ability on it. Now, in the four drop spot, we already have Thundering Raju, so I don't know um, if this is going to see a lot of play, at least early in the Dominary United Standard season, because Thundering Raju is just a better card at this point. But that ability, when you cast a red permanent spell, to get that one damage might be something as we move forward into Standard season that we might want to see a, a different kind of card in here. Um, and maybe it's a one or two of to get some pain damage for playing red spells. Our next card is Cruelty of Dix. Okay, this read ahead saga it costs five mana. And on, on chapter one, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a creature or planeswalker card from it. That player discards that card. On chapter two, search your library for a card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle, you lose three life. So on chapter two, you get to, you get a demonic tutor effect where you get to go look at any look at your library, pull any card you want out from it, and then on turn on chapter three, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So if you're able to mill a card and put it in the graveyard in some way, or your opponent has a really good card in the graveyard, cruelty is going to bring that card back and put it on the battlefield on your side. So we, we've seen similar effects from the first Dominaria, and I expect this to see some play, probably in a control deck. Um, it doesn't have quite have the power of the last five mana um, Black Saga that could bring stuff back, but that ability to cause you to discard something is a pretty good ability, and that search ability certainly is something that Black decks will wanna do. So this is, you know, certainly something that in a in a black control shell probably sees some play. Next, we have some lower rarity cards that I want to talk about because these cards I think have some playability depending on what kind of decks form. So Pixie Illusionist is a one mana blue creature who's a fairy wizard, and you can kick it for three mana and a green. It has flying, and if it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. Okay, so that that's not really all that exciting. But what I think will make this card playable, particularly in a Legends Matters deck, is its tap ability. Target land you control becomes the basic land type of your choice until end of turn. So what Pixie Illusionist allows you to do is put a mana of any color into play for yourself. So you can, if you are casting something that is has domain, that wants you to have as many, obviously with domain, you wanna have as many colors of mana as possible. This is gonna give you an extra one. So I think in that Legends Matters deck, this might be the perfect one drop for it so that it can, it can you know, supplement the mana base whenever you need to, which is really something that's really important. I can even see a, if the Hanada shell does survive rotation, which, you know, based on what I'm seeing right now, doesn't. But this might be a good card in that kind of deck that's three mana, and you can actually 
tap this, make sure you have the mana you need to cast your spells. Our second card here is Battlefly Swarm. And Battlefly Swarm is a Phyrexian insect for a black mana. It has flying, it's a 1-1. And Battlefly Swarm gains death touch until end of turn for a black mana. So this is, an, again, an easy sacrifice outlet, one mana, but it also can do some chip damage early in the game, two, three, three or four damage maybe, by the time you get to the point where you're ready to sack it and get value out of it. So I think that's really helpful, and certainly the possibility of it becoming a very annoying blocker is there um, because of that ability to pay black, make it, give it death touch, and that can then kill any card that your opponent would be attacking with. Our next cards are in white. Now, the first one is our Gideon Phalanx. For five and a white, you get a human core soldier that's a 4-4. Four four. Now, you look at that, not playable. But, this spell costs one less to cast for each creature you control. And it also has vigilance. Now, in the sh soldier shell that we've been talking about throughout the preview season, this might be a nice high-end card in that because early in the game, you're going to be casting lots and lots of little creature spells to build your board state. And Phyrexian, or Argivian Phalanx, is the perfect kind of top-end card because in the end, when you're casting it, you're probably casting it for two, possibly three mana to get a 4-4. Four, four. That's pretty good value um, on a big board that you're playing this card into. So I think, you know, it's not a four of in any kind of deck, but a one or two of in that deck to have some kind of big end finisher that also has Vigilance that can give you some additional support, I think it would be a nice card to potentially have. And we also got Destroy Evil. For two mana, one and a colorless mana, and a white, you get an instant that you can choose one of these options, destroy target creature with tar toughness four or greater, or destroy target enchantment. Now, why I'm bringing up this card is Valorous Stance is right now getting a lot of play in a variety of decks because we've got enough big creatures that we want to go ahead and be able to kill those. But this gives us the added advantage of being able to target an enchantment that you can destroy as well. And we know from um, the Kamigawa block that we're gonna see you know, that enchantment deck continue for the foreseeable future. It's probably, it's obviously we're getting rid of the runes and the Runeforged Champion, but that deck will survive rotation in some form, probably more as a, as a um, green-white deck, but it's certainly something that's going to be playable um, as we roll into the early weeks of, of this new standard season. And Destroy Evil is a value card for us that can kill that large creature or kill any enchantment that we need to get off the battlefield. Our next card is Shore Up. Okay, for one blue mana, you get target creature you control gets plus one and gains hexproof until end of turn. Untap it. Now, this is a, a card that we've seen in various forms um, throughout Magic's history. A one mana um, blue cantrip that's going to give a creature a plus ability and give it hexproof so it cannot be targeted, so that creature can't be targeted for removal. So I think this is going to be something that we're definitely going to see in standard um, in a spells matter deck because you're going to be able to give your creature hexproof, protect it from you know a infernal grasp or another spell, and that's why this is going to be a valuable card, even if it's only a sideboard card in blue decks. Next we have Shadow Prophecy in Bone Splinters. So Shadow Prophecy is a three mana card, two colors and a black to get an instant. With Domain, um, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control. Put up to two of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. You lose two life. So a, a little bit ago, we talked about the Cruelty of Gix, and that card wants you to put some things into your graveyard. So this card kind of works well with that because you're able to dig at least two cards deep, probably three, and allow yourself to 
put something in your hand, up to two of those cards in your hand, and then if you need to put something in the graveyard, you can do that from those three cards. And the loss of life is minimal for, for this effect, so I think this is going to see in a reanimator style deck definitely some play as we move forward. Our la next card is Bone Splitter, Splinters. For a black mana, you get a sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, and destroy target creature. So this is a one mana, kill your token, sacrifice a token, and destroy target creature. So we, I've talked a little bit about the Oni Anvil deck, um, and that deck certainly would want to play this card because on your turn when you'd be casting this, you can simply sacrifice a... Um, token that was created by the anvil and then that card once you've sacrificed that creature it'll come back and in addition to that you get to destroy a target creature for only one mana so this is definitely going to see play um, in a variety of decks um, decks that don't mind killing their own creatures um, again possibly to put stuff in the graveyard um, but we're going to see this all over standard i think um, as at least a one or two of in black decks, maybe more, depending on what kind of um, decks we see developed. And lastly, we've got two additional cards here. The first is Smash to Dust. For a red and a colorless mana, you get a sorcery that allows you to do one of three things. Destroy an artifact, destroy a target creature with defender, um, and Smash to Dust deals one damage to each creature your opponent controls. I think this is a, a definitely a sideboard card in red decks because we obviously know we're going to get more and more artifacts as we move through the next several sets. So that ability to kill an artifact is nice. I mean, we already do have a braid out there that can do the same thing. Um, but I think the ability to destroy a creature with Defender or that simple ability to do one damage to all of your opponent's creatures, that might be relevant, um, especially in... Some of, against some of those token decks that we've been talking about um, throughout the um, Dominary United Standard season that we think are going to come. There's a lot of little tokens out there, and this card can wipe the board of a lot of those little tokens. So, sideboard card to be thinking about in red decks. Lastly, we've got Bite Down. For a colorless and a green mana, you get an instant that target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So this is an, another nice green instant removal spell um, that, more importantly, it can obviously get a, kill a creature, but more importantly, it can take down a planeswalker. So you've got a you know, three or four toughness creature on the field, or sorry, a power creature on the field, and what you do then is you target the planeswalker and kill it on that turn um, as a nice little bonus ability for this and you can the nice thing about it is you can play it on your opponent's turn so you don't have to wait for your turn for that to occur now obviously you know if, when they play a planeswalker yes they're going to get the value out of that first activation of it but after that you have the ability with this card to go ahead and remove it so i don't know how many we're going to see it's certainly a cyborg card against any planeswalker decks um, that we might be seeing so green will want that um, but overall i think it's a good card. We'll see some play going forward. And that's it for Dominaria United St Spoiler Season. Um, it's been fun talking to you guys about the cards in Standard. Overall, I think this is a really, really powerful set. But there's not any cards that are just busted like we've seen in some of the past sets that really warp Standard going forward. I don't think we've got anything that's that busted. But I do think there's cards that work really well together and I think we're going to see a variety of decks develop from Dominaria United. So that's it for today's video. Remember to like and subscribe. And again, thanks to our sponsor, Caffeinated Gamer, for sponsoring these videos. And I'll see you next time.